Hi, this is your mortgage guy, Dave Steinberg, back again with MJ Agostini. MJ is one of my favorite realtors in Connecticut. And we've been having a conversation uh, going back a couple of months now about house prices and about mortgage rates. And what's on your mind, MJ? Hi, Dave. Great to be back with you again and talking real estate and interest rates. Uh, and, I'm, and I'm glad that we have the opportunity to get together today because I the topic that I've been encountering with many of our buyers is whether the interest rates going down, whether number one, whether interest rates are going to go down next year um, prior to election and whether that will be beneficial for the buyer to just be able to secure a property or will that cause prices to go even higher than they already are. So I'm kind of looking at your take on that to see what you've been hearing in the industry, uh, because we have buyers that are, you know, they're exhausted. They've tried multiple times to get properties. They just can't secure them. And they're kind of taking a back seat, thinking that lower interest rates will help them in the future. And I'm just not sure that that's going to happen. What do you think? Love the question. So, you know, I, I keep on trying to find a program that'll give me a PhD in prophecy, and I've yet to find it. I, I think I'm pretty damn good at predicting interest rates. But I'll be honest with you, I don't know anyone who, over a period of 10 years, has called interest rates wrong. It just right. doesn't happen. Let's start with a simple observation. 2008, interest rates start going down. It was a, we've had a long period of great interest rates. 2017, 18, 19, we had amazing interest rates. Then we hit 3%. Nobody predicted that. Nobody predicted. So you find me the guy who predicted a year in advance that we were going to have a 2.75 interest rate in 2020, 2019, you know, and I'll, I, I'll pay money for that guy's opinion, but only if he, if he puts an equal guarantee. Right. Uh, um, it, it's impossible. And, and let me tell you a story. Working with a client right now, he's buying a home, and we're facing a difficult challenge because he has three different um, possibilities for what to do with his interest rate. We can lock him at 7%, we can lock him at 6.5%, or we can lock him at 6%, right? 7% is basically a zero point option. Six and a half percent is a one point option, and six percent is a two point option. And the question and the challenge is do you take the six percent and pay two points, or do you take the seven percent? And he started off the conversation saying, I think interest rates are going to go down next year. Maybe I should take the zero point option. So we had this conversation, and I said, I believe that interest rates are going to go down. But knowing what I know and looking particularly right now at the way the market is pricing, where the market normally, if you went from six and a half to six, that would cost you two points. So if you're paying one point at six and a half, you'd expect to pay three points at six, but it's only two points. The market is doing exactly what you think. The market is predicting that interest rates are going to come down, and therefore they're not paying a premium for higher interest rates, which is normally how the market functions. But do you want to put your house on the line? Do you want to bet with absolute clarity that the rates are going to come down? And my answer to that is not so much. Not so much. Now, your case is your buyer is saying, well, maybe I should wait a year and because rates are going to come down. 
And they're betting against, uh, they're betting on the market, but they're betting with no information. Mm -hmm. I have a story for you. 40 years ago, I worked for a company, a, a subsidiary of Shell Oil, and they had professional oil traders who were trading oil that was going into the major utilities in the Northeast. That's what they did. They bought oil, they sold oil, and they traded oil. They had an incredible amount of information. We would see other entities that would be betting against the small guy. And the big guys always won because right. they always had more information, better information, and they were professionals and they were killing the amateurs. Now, I'm sure there were some amateurs who made money, but you know, like we would get these voluminous reports hundreds of pages, and the report would tell us where every tanker was on the ocean. And so you'd know there's a tanker that's two days out of Philadelphia. I guarantee that the guy who was betting against the professional traders didn't have that information. So your guy is sitting here saying, I'm going to beat the professionals at this game. And it usually doesn't happen. It, or if it happens, it's a matter of luck. So that's number one. And then, as you and I discussed, you know, what happens if, let's say, right now we're talking about a 6.5% loan. What happens if the, the rate goes down to 5%? What happens to the housing market? What happens in the background, right? Think about that. If the market goes down, it could be because the Fed eases up and that's going to create a ripple effect. Or it could be because the Fed pushes us into near recession. Now, if they push us into near recession, housing prices might go down. But if, it goes, if it's not a near recession situation, housing prices could go up and you can go even more than they're going up now. So I'm not big on betting against, I, I'm not bidding, I'm not big on betting against uh, the future. What I advise my clients, probably similar to what you advise your clients is, you know, MJ, your, your last kid moved out of the house. You have, you know, too much house right now, start making orderly plans to, to, to move. You don't have to do it today. You don't have to do it tomorrow. But make an orderly plan as to what you want to do in the next phase of your life. Or, you know, you're, you just had a kid. You may have another one uh, expected. Um, now you have to figure out, well, are you going to live in really tight, tight uh, spaces? Or are you going to start buying that house? I think let your life dictate your real estate decision, unless you're investing. If you're investing, that's a whole different game. Right, right. Yeah, no, I think you're spot on. And, and I've been trying to tell buyers, look, if interest rates go down next year, you know, you can refinance. If you wait till they go down, and all of a sudden prices start to go up and more buyers come back into the market, you're going to see an even more competitive market than you are now. And you're going to be less likely to be able to secure that property that you're looking to buy. So I'm trying to encourage them to tough it out, take buy, secure the property now with a six and a half or 7% rate. And then if they do go down, at least you have your house. You can refinance next year. Um, you know, there, there, there's that option. But then, if if you're competing with all these people next year, like we've, like you've competed with people th through this year, um, it's just going to be even more competitive. And I feel it will continue. The more people in, the higher the prices are going to go. So, 
uh, I, I'm trying to encourage them to take the leap of faith and do the sale now. And if the rates go down next year, great. You've got your property. Call Dave, have him refinance you and uh, and, and get into that lower rate. Because I just think the, the prices will go up, can, will continue to go up if those rates decide to fall. And, you know, next year's an election year. You know, they're going to try to make it look very nicey nice for all of us and make us feel comfortable. Um, and I, I think that you probably will see some movement in interest rates may not be uh, long longevity. They, they may not hold, but I think you will see some um, some adjustments, at least in the short term. Yeah. You know. There's so many different ways to read the future. Um, here, here's my take, you know. Here's my take on it. Number one, if you have the opportunity, if it's the right time in your life to buy, then you buy. And um, a lot of people are worried now because they're saying that the prices are very high. Um, but the prices have been high for 35 years. Like at, at every couple of years, you know, the price price hits a plateau. And then you say, you, you sort of get that number in your head. Oh, I'm comfortable at 450. And then a year and a half later, it, it goes up again. It goes up another 50,000. And now you say, well, that price is too high. And then you wait another year and a half, and now it's at 550. And, mm -hmm. and you look back and you say, oh, I should have bought before. But you, you only, can operate in the market that exists today. There's no other market. There's no market for mortgages. You can't say, I'm going to apply for a mortgage and I want last year's rates. Not going to happen. You can't apply, can't buy a house and say, you know, the this house was 450 two years ago. I want to pay 450 for this house. No one's going to sell it to you with that. Right. Only exist in the market you're in. Yeah. And I think you make a good point. Um, it may not be the right time for you to buy. You know, you you people try to make uh, investment decisions based on taxes and they really should be making investment decisions based on what their investment goals are, not to just avoid taxes. Right. So same holds true with buying a house. Don't buy a house just for the sake of buying a house. You're buying a house because you need to buy a house. You need to size up. You need to size down. You need to relocate. Um, you need more space, less space. Uh, you need to be in a different location for health reasons. I mean, per, buy the property because you personally need to make a change in your life for what any of these reasons. Just don't buy because, oh, rates went down or the prices look good or you know, you really, uh, I think sometimes people just get caught up in the FOMO, fear of missing out, right? And, uh, you know, it may not be the, the right time for you, um, even if the rates decide to go down. And, you know, it could be the right time now because of your, your life circumstances, but maybe next year's better because you anticipate kids moving out, um, in-laws moving in, uh, whatever, whatever changes. So it's really, that's the bottom line. Don't try to time the market, right? Because mm -hmm. we're not, you know, we're not, yeah. don't have that crystal ball, um, but make decisions based on um, your personal situation. Yeah, you know, and I, I think that that holds doubly true for house sellers, right? If you think about people who are holding off selling their home and they're betting on this notion that, you know, I hear prices are going to go up next year. And they may, mm -hmm. they may not. You know, this is the converse of the conversation you just had. I think that climbing the market is usually a losing strategy. What's going on in your market right now? What are you seeing? Our market now, I'm in, uh, I work in the central Connecticut and shoreline Connecticut areas. Um, we've seen definitely a decrease of the 
influx of people from your neck of the woods, from New York, New Jersey. Definitely that has cooled. Uh, the high-end property, now in my market, one, $2 million is a high-end property. We're seeing a little resistance in the higher end. Um, we're seeing days on the market a little bit longer. Uh, there still seem to be selling at good prices. We don't see price reductions, so to speak, uh, but we see them staying on the market a little bit longer. And uh, maybe the sellers are getting asking price, but they're not getting it immediately right off the bat. So we're no, seeing- That's on the high higher end of them. Right, right. On the low end, it's still feverish pace because, you know, the majority, what's the national average for median sales price is like 390, somewhere in that vicinity, 380, 390, 350. It keeps changing all the time. But when you're in that marketplace, it's extremely competitive, um, multiple buyers, uh, multiple contracts, usually properties get bid up. Um, but I, you know, I, I also think the consumer, and I'm sure they know this from their observation is, you know, real estate agents will put property on slightly below what they really feel the property will sell for um, with the anticipation of creating these bidding situations, this auction like environment and propelling the price up. So, you know, you see, I don't want buyers to get nervous because they say, oh, 50,000 over, 75,000 over. Well, it may not be that much over because the price was artificially low to begin with. So buyers have to realize when they see a price go out there, it's not probably not going to be the price that it sells at. And it's probably not the market price either. It's probably 10%. Um, below what it should. So that yes, you're going to see an, an increase and you're going to see property going over asking, but it's not that people are paying crazy money for it. The, at the end of the day, the property sells for what the property's worth. Mm. Mm. Yeah. You know, you and I both have buyers that are competing in that market. And I'd love to hear your advice. So, you know, hey, MJ, I want to buy a house. I want I, I want a three-bedroom, two-bath house uh, right outside of New Haven. What do you, what, what, how do I get prepared for that? What do I need to do? Well, you know, it, it's the first thing is having the absolute best qualification letter, and 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 it's going to uh, it's going to you it's going to Dave and say Dave set me up so that I look I look perfect in the eyes of the seller. Um, what we've been saying is if you're qualified to five hundred thousand and you're looking at a four hundred thousand dollar piece of property. Show the seller you're qualified to 500, although the property is selling for 400. Show the seller you're overqualified for this, that you're solid, that you're not reaching to get this contract, because that's what we coach our sellers to look at. Look at look for the buyer who's not throwing it all in, including the kids and the dogs to try to get to secure a property. Um, see, make sure that there's some delta there that they that they that they are more than qualified to purchase. Is the margin and, right? Right, and, and having you writing up the pre-approval letter, not just a qualification letter, but giving having someone give you your tax returns and checking the the employment and doing the debt asset verification. Have everything done except you know the appraisal, really. Um, is really the ticket to securing a property and trying to get that in over so many others. As a listing agent, seeing multiple offers, you know, if we have 29 offers staring us in the face, we're going to look at, obviously, we, we, we look at the best qualified people first. It's not even necessarily the price. You know, we want to look at where the qualifications are and, and then whittle it down. So having you create a letter that's uh, solid, more, you know, top of the line, you know, there's no holes in this deal. These people are are good for it. 
um, is really like step number one. And obviously getting out to that property immediately when it goes on the market, um, you know, there are some agents that don't use escalation clauses where you're willing to bid higher than the highest bid up to a certain amount. Um, I, I welcome those, you know, if you want to do that, that's a technique that buyers are using to try to secure property. As long as you can, you feel comfortable going to those numbers, um, you know, some non-refundable deposits, you know, these are things that techniques that will, if, if you're very comfortable and Dave gives you a solid letter that, you know, you're good for the money, you feel comfortable making your deposit non-refundable. Um, obviously, if you have a bad inspection or something happens, um, you know, you have to you have to be comfortable that, you know, the house is in good condition and that you're not going to have an issue there. But these are just some of the little tricks of the trade, so to speak, to try to secure yours. But you never want to put yourself in jeopardy. You never want to go above your head. You never want to buy something that you can't handle. And and so you have to rein it in a little bit. You can't you can't feel, get into that frenzy and go, you know, I want to play with these the big boys um, unless you feel 100 percent absolutely comfortable that this is the right property for you. Mm. Yeah. And I think the part that what I try to coach people on is it takes a team, right? You need a yeah. great realtor. You need MJ as your realtor. You need a great home inspector. You need your insurance broker lined up. You need If you're going to have your own attorney, you need an attorney. You want to have that entire team ready for you so that when you go into the house and you make an offer, in your offer letter, you can say, we're serious. We're ready to go. We're, you know, and... Um, you want to think through some of the issues. So, for example, um, let's say that house that you know started at 450, you're offering 500. What we'll do is we'll tell the client, we'll tell the seller, we're good, even if the appraisal comes in back at that 450, we're still going to get this loan closed. Get you know, understand that, understand how that works. Deal with the appraisal issues up front. If you are comfortable with the house, then say, yes, we're going to inspect, but we'll only, we're only inspecting to confirm our understanding. And we're not going to come back to you to negotiate price based on the inspection. That makes a big difference because now the seller has what, what, this is a game of risk. There's risk involved when a seller takes an offer because they're they're trusting you to get the house. Right. So by reducing the risks, oh, okay, so the mortgage is pre-approved. I'll have an approval in 48 hours on credit. The appraisal is going to get done within 10 days. The appraisal, they're, they're, they've already addressed the appraisal issue. So if it comes in a little bit low, it's not going to crush us. And we've addressed the uh, um, inspection issues. And so we know what to deal with on inspection. Um, and, and as a listing agent, I don't know if you're doing this. Are you uh, In some of my markets, we're seeing the sellers have the house pre-inspected. Are you doing that? Yeah, yeah. We, especially on houses where sellers been in the house 25, 30 years, we say do an inspection right up front you know, get out all the bugs, so to speak, get out, have anything get discovered because we know, and it's proven that buyers will pay more for a pre-inspected house. They just feel more comfortable. They see the data. They, they know what they're getting into. You know, everyone has hesitation because they just don't know what they're walking into. And especially we're dealing with a lot of trusts. We're dealing with a lot of states that don't have disclosure requirements. So these buyers are going in blind. Having that pre-inspection done, spending the five hundred or six hundred dollars on it is going to avoid a lot of issues during the inspection. It's going to avoid buyer's remorse if something happens unexpected. It's going to allow you to get a jump on any deficiencies and get those corrected before the property even goes out to the marketplace. Um, you, you're in a much better position all around. The buyer feels more comfortable. You feel like 
there's no surprises. Um, so yeah, a pre-inspected house is always a, considered a premium house. We encourage sellers to do it. Um, the buyer may still have their own inspection, but we we know that they'll more, more than likely pay more for it up front, and you have a, a lot less to worry about under negotiations. Um, and some of some of the clauses that have been coming in, you know, different. Boards have different contracts, different parts of the country have different contracts, but a lot of the buyers are saying, look, they're writing right into their contracts that, look, we'll take care of any inspection up to $5,000, any inspection issue up to $5,000. So Mr. Seller, you don't have to worry if you've, if I got a spray for carpenter ants or I have to uh, fix a leaky faucet or I have to replace a refrigerator, you know, don't worry, Mr. Seller, we're good. Um, but anything over 5,000, if you've got a bad furnace, bad roof, obviously then, then we're going to need to talk about that. But we're seeing buyers put that right into the contract so that the sellers are like, good, I'm not going to have to deal with any minor insignificant things and um, if they have the pre-inspection and they know all their major systems are good it's 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 a no-brainer yeah and you know for, in some cases for seniors who've been in the house for as you say 20 30 years maybe even longer and they're ready to move right now what we're finding is that the seniors often have a lot of fear and anything that you can do to lessen the fear is just very powerful. And, and so um, in a situation like that where it's pre-inspected and, and you, you know, you say, look, here's the inspection. We're not going to, the seller will say, we're not going to reduce our price. We're not going to make any repairs. You're taking the house as is. That's a way for seniors to make a clean break from their house. Right. And um, and then, you know, I think there's there's a real issue in terms of seniors who are who are worried about selling because all of a sudden they're hearing, oh, no, there's a six and a half percent rate. Yeah. But if you're selling and you're getting all cash, you should be able to buy your next home for cash if that makes sense. And if it doesn't, talking to your financial advisor, coming up, looking at your team and saying, okay, what's the best way for me to structure my next transaction? But so often it's a cash transaction. Yeah, and I, I think you make a good point. There are many seniors out there that want to sell. They want, they want to make the move, but they're paralyzed mentally and, you know, physically. You know, a lot of them have collected you know, especially the older ones, you know, any depression era babies that are still left over, you know, they were big collectors and big savers because they never knew when, you know, they would not have the, the items that they have anymore because they went through that. I, I know my my father was a depression era uh, baby. So um, I understand that. And, you know, as realtors, we try to help manage that process with more than just selling. You know, we try to line up estate sale companies, clean outs, moving, cleaning companies, um, and then try to get them positioned to know where they're going before we even do this, because that is the biggest anxiety. Yes, I want to sell my house. Yes, I want to scale down, but I don't know where I'm going. I, I have a client. I love her to death. She's 80 years old. I've been talking to her for 20 years. Um, ah. And she's She's wanted to, to scale down. And her big thing is she's never been able to find the right place to move into. Before she wanted to go into over 55. Well, now she's like on assisted living level. And um, but that was 20 years of being paralyzed. And, you know, we said, look, you can do this and you can do that. Um, and always really, really afraid to make a move. Um to, to make those changes. But, um, you know, finally at 80 years old, you know, we're getting the house cleaned out. Her son's up here. We're getting, we've picked out an assisted living place. We're making estate sale plans, all kinds of things to get her property ready and get her off. But that's the biggest anxiety. Where am I going? I, I, mm -hmm. I want to sell, but how am I, where am I going? How am I going to get there? And how am I going to get rid of my stuff? Well, 
MJ, a pleasure as always. This has been the Mortgages Made Easy podcast. Uh, so happy to have MJ join us. And uh, the MJ will post your information down below. And really, just a pleasure. If you're looking, if you're in central Connecticut and you need a realtor, MJ at XDM. Thank you, Dave. It's nice to be here today.